So here we go. I'm going to talk about, I'm not going to get into a lot of war stories and, you know, like I sometimes do when I'm speaking at All Addictions Anonymous or Cocaine Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm a person that qualifies for any 12-step fellowship. I've gone to Codependence Anonymous, Emotions Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, Sexaholics Anonymous. I mean, you can go. I qualify for just about any addiction except gambling. I, be, I put a bet on something once, lost, never did it again. But, I mean, just about anything I would qualify for. So I've been addicted to all kinds of different things. I've, I've been addicted to giving advice. I've been addicted to fixing people, trying to save people. I've been addicted to, I'll just talk about some things that are kind of unusual to think of as addictions, but I've been addicted to the Bible. And what do I mean by that? That's when you're just reading the Bible, reading the Bible, reading the Bible, but you're not out there being with people. Being addicted to spiritual books where I'm hiding, reading books as opposed to living the word or living the spiritual principles. Does this make sense that you could get addicted to something like that? Even though it's a good thing, you could get, still get addicted to it. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, and I've been addicted to the internet, downloading stuff. I don't have a television in my home now because, uh, sorry, we have a TV but no cable. Because when I have a TV, I, I, I watch it addictively, like 10, 12 hours. I avoid my life. I like to hide away from my emotions and my life by anything that I can escape to. And one of those things is television. I haven't had a, a cup of coffee in over seven years. I used to drink 20 to 25 coffees a, cups of coffee a day. I used to smoke three to four packs of cigarettes a day. I smoked as much as $30,000 worth of crack cocaine in a one-month period. Um, I drank alcoholically at a very young age, you know, where, you know, I would drink to, like, when I was in high school, I would drink to the point that I would puke, and, and then I would take down some amphetamines so that I could drink some more, and then I'd force myself to puke so that I could continue to drink. I used to smoke 10 to 20 joints of marijuana a day at one point. Um, I'm sure there's more addictions, uh, you know, that I've broken free of. Um, one of them is uh, a verbal abuse. Of, uh, and worrying. You, could be, you know you can be addicted to worrying instead of actually taking action in my life. The actions that I know I should be taking, I would just sit in bed worrying. It, beca it becomes like an addiction. You get this feeling of comfort compared to what it's going to take to take action to actually deal with these issues in my life. And definitely codependence. That's where, like I was in a relationship with a girl, I broke off, broke off the relationship 13 different times and kept going back to her. Like when you're in relationships that you know are not healthy, but yet you keep going back to them. It's like you, you know, you, that's it. This is the last time I'm never going to be with her anymore. You know, that, that's it. It's not right. It's da-da-da. And you leave, and then you go back. So can you guys relate to that addiction as well? So there's all kinds of numerous addictions uh, that, I've been, that I've experienced. And... And what I've been obsessed with in a real positive way, in my own, like I'm just, it's like my, my, my mission in life is addiction now. I used to be a corporate recruiter, a corporate headhunter for about 20 years, used to make lots of money, had my own business. And I was struggling with all these addictions even while in my own business. And I was always asking myself the question, why does this keep happening? Why do I keep doing this to myself? What's the cause of addiction? And so then I hear people say, well, alcoholism is, it's in the genes. You were born with it. Raise your hands if you would if you've heard that, you know, that alcoholism, it's in the genes and you're born with it. Now, I'm not here to make anything right or wrong because that doesn't, that doesn't make me feel peaceful to be right, you know, and to try to tell you this is the way it is. I don't care what you think, but my way is right. I don't believe, I used to be like that forever. I'm not that way anymore. I have a viewpoint now, but, you know, it's not, I'm not saying that I'm right. But here's what I'd like to ask us to consider. Um, if a person believes, if we teach our children that they may or may not be born with the alcoholism or drug addiction gene, and if they got it, they're screwed, is that a powerful message for kids? Is it? It's a negative message, so I don't share that message. Now, what's interesting, though, is I'm the founder of All Addictions Anonymous. I'm a 12-step AA guy, and I'm a big book man, you know, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I take pe people through the steps, and I teach them the powerless model because most of the people that come to me truly believe they're powerless. They truly believe they got the addiction gene or they don't, and I don't fight them on it. I'm not there to 
have an intellectual debate with them. I'm just there to serve people. And what I've noticed is when you serve kids, it's, it's more powerful to teach them the principles of the 12 steps without teaching the powerless part and confusing them and that you have to surrender your life to God or you won't be free. I don't get into all of that. I teach the core principles of it. So, so, here, so let me get back to this one. How many of you have heard this one that if you've been abused as a kid, that's the reason why people get addicted? You ever heard that one? Some people, a lot of us have heard that. So I've been abused as a kid, and yes, I got addicted, but that's not the reason I got addicted, in my opinion, because there are people who've lived lives of abuse way worse than me, and did they all become crack addicts like me? Did they all become addicts? Not everyone, right? And I grew up in poverty. I grew up in poverty in the projects of Jane and Finch Corridor. My single parent, mother, raised us, did an amazing job, and we were poor. How many have heard the saying that, you know, people that grow up in poverty are likely to become addicted. That's a reason why people get addicted, because of poverty. Have you heard that? And I used to, and I'm not saying all that stuff's wrong. I know all these things have an impact. They all have an influence on what causes someone to maybe turn to addictions. But what I've, what I've done with my life is I've chosen to look at my life from a different viewpoint. And that is, how is it possible that maybe I'm the one who had everything to do with me becoming an addict? Not again like it's the truth, but it's empowering. If I can see, to, see and take a look at my life and see what are the choices that I made that caused me to become an addict. If I can look at it that way, that's empowering to me. Because when I see what the choices are I made to get me there, would it make sense that I could make different choices to get myself out of all these addictions? Does that make sense? Whether I believe in God or not, and listen, I believe in God strongly, but that's not always the most effective message to carry to everybody. Does that make sense? All right? I don't want the, the subject of God or religion or spirituality to stand in the way of anyone getting free, especially kids that don't want to hear about it. Some kids do, but a lot of them don't. They want to know, how do I stop doing drugs? How do I stop cutting myself? How do I stop these bad habits? How do I da-da-da-da?